Okay, 7 o'clock, we have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. Okay, with all of that, I believe we can continue the Live College building. plans. Yes. And you have those to put up on the an easel. Mounted, but these are a revised set of the engineering plans, which show the basically some very small tweaks in the drainage and um, the addition of the parking space. Oh, okay. 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 These were delivered to your office last week, Bill. But this is another set of markets. Nobody came to look at them. Incorporated. Um, and with me this evening is Rick Klein from Berkshire Design, Tom Reedy from Bacon Wilson, Neil Abraham from um, the director of Five Colleagues Inc., um, Val Miller from New England Environmental, and John Raposo from Cutler. So hopefully we have the people who can answer whatever questions you have. I know you've already heard this once, so I will keep the introduction relatively brief. But basically, um, before you go any yes. further, I have to do a disclosure under <clears throat> Chapter 266A, Section 23, to say, on advice of town council, that I have in the past provided legal services to five colleges. I have not provided any work for five colleges since 2006, and I have no current professional relationship with five colleges. Anybody else? <laughs> As was discussed last time, and I think you're all aware, the Five Colleges is a uh, not-for-profit corporation that was formed in 1965 by the five local colleges to help to facilitate coordinating their educational uh, delivery of services. So they um, try to coordinate between the colleges, they provide services to the colleges, they provide facilities to the colleges, and they try to uh, 
to do away with duplication of effort of the colleges. So it's really their job to coordinate the educational experience of the five colleges. Uh, they uh, engage in a broad range of those educational um, experiences from combining curricula to providing facilities. So that's basically what they do and what they were formed for. Their board is made up of the presidents of the colleges and, and the uh, chancellor of UMass. So that is their board. Neil is their director. Um, the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 3, provide that the zoning bylaw cannot prohibit, regulate, or restrict the use of land for educational purposes. Provided, however, that it can be regulated, reasonably regulated, basically for size issues, for bulk, for setback, for coverage, for height. Um, but it cannot be regulated in a way that would prevent it from being used for those purposes. So we believe that five colleges and this particular library annex fulfill the uh, letter of that law and the spirit of that law. The case law that has been provided to you also in the booklet I just gave you supports that for everything from parking garages to housing to whatever. So we believe that we come within that portion of the statute, which is generally known as the Dover Amendment. Your town council agrees. He has forwarded to, to you a letter which describes our organization, and it is his opinion that we comply with the requirements of the statute in our organization. And he also agrees that the use that we propose to put this land to and this building to is educational in nature and cannot be restricted as to use. He goes on to define what the statute does, that you can um, fairly regulate as to bulk, size, height, coverage, those kinds of things. This particular project meets all of the requirements of your zoning bylaw for setback coverage and all of that. What we are, I believe, the biggest discussion that we have is the size of it. The case law as well as the statute um, insinuates that it is a relational relationship issue. In other words, clearly if you have a 130,000 square foot piece of land, you cannot put a 100,000 square foot building on it. It is too big. This particular building um, is something in excess of five but less than six percent coverage of the entire lot. The lot's 45 acres. And this building is that's before you tonight. We'll go over in a moment, but is 100, just under 112,000 square feet. So it is between five and six percent of the size of the lot. Your What's bylaw the percentage the slope, of the size of the usable space? That's not what the bylaw says, though. That's the question. Yes. Oh, I, the usable space has not been calculated. Okay. Um, because we don't need it. Um, so what's before you this evening is a revised building. Um, five colleges heard you last time, heard the neighbors last time, um, that they thought it was too big and that uh, they thought that the color needed to be reviewed. Uh, five colleges has met with the neighbors a number of times since then. They've reviewed their own um, studies as to what's going to be needed for storage in this facility. And they have reduced the size of the building to just under 112,000 square feet. So they've reduced the size by just about 20%. Um, which is, it is still a large building, but it is also a big step to reduce it by 20% of its size. They increased the parking by the up to 46 spaces. And the board requested that increase based upon the size of the two meeting rooms which one holds 20, one holds 12, and the 12 employees that would be serving in the building. The number of employees, the size of the room did not change as the building got smaller. So that part of it is the same. So basically what came out of the meetings with the neighbors is, and with your board meeting was a smaller building and a different color. A number of colors were explored and it seems to be a consensus of most that dark brown will be the least visible and that a gray roof, you'll notice a lot of the other buildings have uh, white roofs that really stick out in the summertime, probably not in the wintertime, 
but this had the gray roof to make it less visible. Um, <clears throat> One of the things that was in your packet last time but was not really, uh, was not addressed and there were no boards to show you was what we think the view of this is going to be. So this is the building as it's proposed to site and you have the, the, the frame there. This is a picture of, that shows you the site in relationship to the houses on North Maple Street. Uh, High Meadow Road, Rocky Hill Road, Elaine Manor, and Home Depot. And so the siting of the building is to the very south of the property. It's down in a, quite a dip, so it's, it's fairly low. And what we're going to show you is views from each of these positions. So there is a view from um, North Maple Street, which is right here. You can refer to it. There's a view from High Meadow, which is right here. And there's a view from Rocky Hill. We have views, most of them are wintertime views, but we do have one with foliage. Um, so to start with, this is the North Maple Street view. And as you can see, the building is superimposed by the architect um, in that field. This is a wintertime view from a number of different places. And then the architect is also drawn in the building so you can see where it is, although you cannot necessarily see the building. I think it's easier to look at that up close. The second view is from High Meadow. And this would show you, once again, um, this is drawn in the building. And you can see where it is there. That, once again, is a wintertime view. Hey, the Jim, last you put them on the easel so everybody can see them. Yeah, I should. Yeah. And the last one is from Rocky Hill Road. Once again, you can see where they have drawn it in so that it is visible and it is superimposed in there. So those are the wintertime views from those three spots uh, here, here, and there. Then we did one, just to give you an idea of what it might be like, of the, yes, I will. Why don't you actually give them to people, and they can they let them pass it around while you're talking? Sure. Your first time. And if you want, Richard, there are other easels we can put them up on. Um, so those are the views that the architect's rendering would show people from those neighborhoods would see. You have those same pictures in here and the same um, uh, views of each one of them and the point where they come from. So basically those have been revised since your last um, meeting by reducing by that 20% the size of the building so those renderings of it are all new. Um, so basically the uh, the applicant